What's up guys and welcome to today's video. We're going to be talking about breakfast, the first meal of the day. The meal that breaks the fast. I'm going to be answering a few questions which you may have surrounding the topic of breakfast, such as what should I eat for breakfast? When should I eat it? And do I even need to be having it in the first place? Now hopefully you have awoken from a long, peaceful and relaxing sleep. So the first thing you're gonna to need to do is to get some water into your system because you will be dehydrated, assuming you've not really drank much water throughout the night. One thing you could have for breakfast, which is probably the easiest and most convenient thing for you to have, is some form of a smoothie or a shake. Now, the world is your oyster when it comes to the ingredients which you're putting into something like this. You can have a leaner one, one which is fewer in calories, so you'd basically just be wanting your protein, maybe some water, and maybe some low calorie vegetables or fruit, if that's what you wanna do. If you're the type of person that needs to make more of a calorie dense one because you either don't have much of an appetite or you just struggle to get your calories in, then there's so many different ways you can bulk it up. And I always advise that you bulk up your shakes with real food and real ingredients. Don't go out there and buy mass gainers because it's just pumped full of crap and gone through excessive amounts of protein. Protein? Processing. What am I talking about? If you're not hungry and you're not in the mood to eat anything, then don't eat. You don't necessarily have to eat. There's nothing wrong with not eating in the morning. There's some myth that is still going around that breakfast is the most important meal of the day and you need to have something to eat first thing upon waking up. That's not true, okay? It's completely dependent upon the individual. But what you need to ask yourself is, okay, what does your morning entail? Okay, so what are you gonna be doing until midday, one o'clock? If you're the type of person that needs to just go to work, sit down and be at an office job, where you're pretty sedentary, you don't necessarily need to fuel much activity, then you don't necessarily need a huge amount of food. Whereas if you're the type of person that is gonna be training at some point in the morning, doing some exercise, okay, your performance is gonna to need to be as high as it possibly can be, then pre-workout nutrition is gonna be very important. So the next option we have is a lovely steak with some green vegetables if you wanted to. This is gonna bump up the protein to around 50 grams, bump up the fats a little bit more. You could have some eggs. Pretty lovely breakfast right there. Now, if you're the type of person that's gonna be fasting in the morning, that's completely fine, but I do have some words of advice, okay? So let's take, for example, someone who is a hard gainer. They're struggling to grow, they're required to consume quite a lot of calories, and they just don't really have much of an appetite, okay? If you prolong that first meal of the day, it's gonna be harder for you to fit all those calories in within a shorter feeding window. So the sooner you start eating, the better it's gonna be for you to consume all those calories that you need in order for you to see progress. Now, what if you're the type of person that trains first thing in the morning? If you're gonna train fasted, again, there's nothing wrong with training fasted. I've done it before. I can do it, I can get through it. But if you're struggling to get stronger, or you're finding that you're just not really seeing much progress within the gym, maybe you need to reconsider either training fully fasted and maybe have some nutrition before you actually train. You could have a bagel with topping of your choice. Now, in today's example, I'm gonna have it with smoked salmon. The annoying thing about smoked salmon is it is quite expensive. Second thing is, you know, some people just can't stand the taste and the smell of smoked salmon, so if that is you, this isn't an option. I'm just gonna have this as it is. I'm not gonna have any butter on my bagel because I'm a savage. So, yet another potential option which you could have. Chicken and avocado. This is actually quite nice, right? So, give this one a try if you want. I know chicken may not always be the most palatable thing first thing in the morning, but honestly, I couldn't care less. I could eat anything for breakfast. I see food as food. I don't see as, you know, there being a category of foods which can only be eaten at breakfast. No, I'll, I'll literally eat anything. So I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about my experience with breakfast and what I tend to do first thing in the morning. I will often wake up. I'll, well, I do definitely 100% wake up, hopefully. Uh, I'll have my water, and then I tend to have just one to two cups of black coffee, an Americano, first couple of hours of waking up. And then generally, I probably break my fast at 11 or 12 o'clock. It just completely depends upon when I'm actually hungry. You know, when I'm sat there, I'm like, do you know what? I'm actually really hungry right now. That's when I'll eat. And I train later on in the afternoon. It tends to be anywhere between two, three, or four o'clock. So before that session, I do have at least two meals in my system before that. 
Now, if you're the type of person that likes to have bread first thing in the morning, or you just like bread anyway, there's nothing wrong with bread. People are like, oh, Mike, I never see you having bread. It's not because it's bad for you. It's just because I generally feel like when I have bread, I don't feel the best after it. I can't explain it, but I just feel like bread is probably not the best thing for me to have, or at least not have too much of it. So it's something I have every now and then. I feel like there's a better source of carbohydrates for me to have. If you are gonna have bread, it's probably better off you stay away from the white, processed, starchy bread and go for the whole grain stuff. Especially ones with lots of seeds in because one slice can actually give you anywhere between you know, six, seven, eight, nine grams of protein, which is actually quite good. Some people might find this absolutely disgusting. Some people might think, ooh, I'm gonna try that and they might like it. Tins of mackerel or sardines. I think I remember the first time I had this, my dad showed it to me, believe it or not, when I was a, a young teenager and I saw him make it and I thought he was absolutely insane. I was like, dad, that looks disgusting. Why have you made me this? Anyway, I tried it and uh, it was actually quite good. I like fish, okay, so I don't mind having fish. Obviously for the type of person that really doesn't enjoy eating fish and can't stand the fishiness, then mackerel or sardines is not gonna be for you. But the good thing is obviously with, with these, particularly this one, this one comes in a tomato sauce, which is nice because the bread is just gonna soak it up. Try and get the ones which are obviously of the highest quality possible. Oily fish is very good for you. I think a lot of people are not eating enough oily fish to be honest. But obviously I understand if you don't like fish, why you're not eating it. But look at that, we managed to get one full tin on the slice of bread. Now, don't ask me how I came across this. This was years ago. I was trying to think of some sort of an alternative to chocolate spread, to spread over toast or a bagel that wasn't gonna be absolutely horrendous in terms of macros. And I thought, what if I could try and turn my protein shake into uh, like a thick, pasty spread? So what I did, obviously this took quite a bit of practice to get the consistency right. I put a tiny bit of almond milk into a cup, right? And then I get one scoop or two scoops of protein, depending upon how much paste you need. Now, obviously, you do have to get a good tasting protein for this to have the right effect. Otherwise, it's either gonna be extremely clumpy or it's gonna taste foul. The problem with bread, if you just have bread on its own or like bread and avocado, there's not really enough protein there. I want you guys, if you're having your breakfast or first meal of the day, to be getting in 30, 40, 50 max grams of protein in. So if we get the paste, you can just spread it, apply it to the bagel, and there we have it. We have a, oh God, we saved it. We've got a bagel with some paste on it. Now we're gonna move on to something else, something which is quite popular. Oatmeal, we have about 50 grams there mixed with almond milk. Put it in the microwave or on the stove, however you wish, this isn't gonna take long. Now, you can make this look really pretty and fancy and add lots of fruit to it and little bits and bobs and take a picture of it and put it on Instagram if you want, or you can just eat it like a man. The problem with oatmeal by itself is there's not quite enough protein in there. So if you're having your breakfast and it just consists of oatmeal and fruit and things like that, you're running a little bit low on the protein. So I would either have a shake separate to the oatmeal, or if you want, make sure that the oatmeal is really runny once it's cooked, and then you put a scoop of protein in, mix it up, and then you've got a nice tasty little dessert there. Also, omelets, eggs, don't get me started on omelets and eggs. I have them almost every day. It feels great when I have them, I'm not gonna lie. If you wanna have a lower calorie version of an omelet, you just have maybe two, three egg yolks, some extra egg whites, okay? Or if you wanna have a calorie dense one, you throw in things like chorizo or some sweet potato or some cheese or anything else which is calorie dense, which is gonna you know, make it easy for you to get all those calories in for you. The last one I'm gonna show you, because you've had far too many options to choose from, is a nice salmon fillet, a little salmon tomato salad. Not hugely exciting. If you wanted to add some more calories, then you could add some nuts to it. But again, depends what your calorie allowance is gonna be. Generally speaking, when it comes to nuts, this is something which I've learned recently, it's good to vary up the type of nuts which you're having. 
right? So don't just have almonds every single day because there's a risk of building up potential intolerance to them. Maybe one day have almonds, the next day have cashews, the day after that you have pecans, the day after that you have walnuts, okay? So key points from this video, which I want you to go away with, Ultimately, you can eat whatever you want at the end of the day. It's your choice. I am not telling you what to eat. I'm just hopefully educating you a little bit on the topic of breakfast and giving you some ideas you can go off and try it yourself. I want you to just listen to your body. That is the most important thing. So many people don't do that. People just eat things and they don't really track how they feel after they've eaten something or people are just not really self-aware. So whatever you eat, just sit down an hour afterwards, two hours afterwards, ask yourself, how do you feel? How is your mental thinking being affected by that meal? How do you feel? Have you got lots of energy? Are you more hungry? Or are you quite satisfied? All these things you need to ask yourself. And if you don't feel great, then it's probably best you try something else. So this is all about trying different things at the end of the day. I've been doing this for years. I've tried loads of different breakfast options, and I've found you know, meals which work best for me and my approach, which I can fit within my lifestyle and which allow me to reach my goals, you know, whatever they might be at that point in time. I would say it's probably best to vary up a little bit. I know some people like routine eating the same thing every single day, but I think variety can be beneficial for you so that you potentially don't run the risk of either becoming intolerant to something or become even deficient in something. So thank you all for watching. If you've got any questions, drop a comment below. I will try my best to get back to you. Give it a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it and make sure you subscribe to my channel. See you guys soon.